So tell us what we're doing, Jeff. Well, right now we popped the boot off, and um, yeah, if we were, first we took the spring off, wedged a little screwdriver in here, kind of worked it around so it came out evenly, and then it just it just popped right out. So the reason we're doing this is that yesterday both of his fork legs were gushing oil, like a lot of oil, like on the ground, all over the bike. So we're going to try to clean the dirt and mud out of the fork seal with some improvised tools and see if we can get them to stop leaking because everything is just doused in oil at this point. So. And we did stop at the car wash to clean it before that. We did. We did We did pressure wash the bike, soap them down at the car wash, which is a good idea because it, it helps keep dirt from causing any more damage. So. So what Jeff did is he made an improvised kind of uh, seal cleaner with some like a plastic card. We're trying to work it up inside the seal and he made a little hook shape kind of with it so it kind of grabs any mud or stuff trapped in there but it only takes a small particle of dirt or mud to cause these things to start to leak. So I'm just going to spend some time trying to clean these things out with this improvised tool. They make a tool for this and that's what we should have but we don't. All right, good morning from day three of the Colorado BDR. We stayed in Gunnison at the KOA overnight. It was awesome because we had showers, we had a grassy area, we could do some laundry. Uh, they had snacks and cold drinks, you know, really nice to get cleaned up and kind of reset like that. We tried to fix Jeff's leaking fork seals. I don't know how successful that's gonna be. I, since he can't hear me right now, I can tell you, I don't think they're gonna hold. I think they're gonna leak oil until they just run out of oil. I think the seals are shot in his bike. But it's a beautiful morning. We're headed back onto the route here after taking a little bit of a diversion yesterday. One thing that's nice about having these larger, heavier, you know, adventure bikes like these 890s is that when you need to cruise at 70 miles an hour, it's super comfortable, smooth. You got plenty of power. You got cruise control, good wind protection. So you can cover some miles on this thing if you need to. That's one advantage over a smaller dual sport bike, but on a lot of the trails yesterday, a dual sport bike would have been much better. These things are very heavy for the kind of terrain we were riding, so everything's a compromise. That's just the way it is. All right, we're finally on some dirt. So about after 20 miles of highway, we're on dirt road, County Road 38. So we're heading up to Juanita Hot Springs. Nice graded gravel road, beautiful valley here. Just open, beautiful country, fresh air, blue sky. Nothing to complain about. Kind of dusty back there for Jeff. I've got the better GPS and the better setup here for navigation, so I've been leading most of the way. Sometimes he rides beside me to stay out of the dust. That can be a good tip, but just watch. You know, keep to the right around corners. Make sure you don't have a head-on collision. When you see residential areas like this, it's always good to just be respectful about your speed. You know, don't don't be crazy with speeding through places like this with the dust and you know, traffic and cars, kids playing, dogs, stuff like that. Just be respectful. All right, we're continuing on the route towards the little community of Pitkin. So I think we're on County Road 38 still. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, you can see beautiful aspen trees. This will be really beautiful in a couple weeks when all these trees turn color. So the road's kind of just bumpy. It's like all these embedded rocks, washboards. What I find on roads like this is it's tempting to like turn up the speed and get going fast, but then you'll hit one of these giant embedded rocks and you could risk bending a rim or getting a pinch flat in your tire. And things like that are avoidable, so just avoid it, you know? I, I don't want to end have a bad day of, due to something that I could have avoided. Okay, so we just arrived into the small little uh, village of Pitkin. I don't know the exact history of this community, but Pretty cool in this beautiful high mountain valley, really peaceful. Probably some sort of farming, cattle, maybe it goes back into the mining era. But you come across these small towns, I just wonder how it would be to live here in the winter. That must be pretty, pretty severe. Like, you gotta be really prepared. People are always so nice in these small towns, so just be respectful and obey the speed limits. So you only find these kind of cool places in these little small western towns. So cool. It's the history of it. Got the old truck, the old oil cans. You can see here the old pump. Phillips 66. Contains lead. So do you want some leaded fuel? You get fully leaded. Get all these cool license plates. Pretty, pretty awesome here. What a cool little...
All right, so we're almost to the top of Cumberland Pass. So between Pitkin and Tint Cup, you've got this um, just really bumpy, like rocky road. It's not difficult at all. It just rattles your teeth out. It's so rough. So yeah, between these two little communities, you've got this Cumberland Pass. I think it's around 10 or 11,000 feet. It's nothing like the passes we did yesterday in section two. Uh, much, much more gentle than that. Okay, so we came down off Cumberland Pass. Now we're in the small town of Tin Cup. Another little town with probably some interesting history with cattle running or mining. Small mountain towns are just so unique. Still a pretty high elevation. Got the pine trees, rivers, just gorgeous, you know. So I should probably take a look at this sign and kind of orient myself here. Mirror Lake Tin Cup Pass. Oh, I've been over Tin Cup Pass. That's really hard. Uh, Taylor Park. Yeah, so we're going straight through actually that way. After some pretty fun off-road uh, trails, water crossings through kind of the Taylor Park area. Now we're back on Blacktop, headed over Cottonwood Pass uh, into Buena Vista. So last time I rode this, it was so long ago that it was actually a dirt road. It was like one of those oil dirt roads that still got a lot of traffic. But since, I, uh, since I've been here last, they decided to pave it. And the pavement is really nice and beautiful. This is a really great really great street ride. <laughs> what do you think of Cottonwood Pass? Cottonwood Pass was amazing. And we still have the best part to go going down this way. So that takes us down to Buena Vista there. Was that the section that they just paved? Yes. Brand new pavement, yeah. Wow. wow. Look at the highway. So that direction goes to Buena Vista. Oh man, could you imagine a better motorcycle road? That's so picturesque. Alright, we're back on the official route now. We're going to head over Weston Pass, over towards Leadville and I've actually ridden this pass a long time ago and I kind of remember it. I just remember it being real scenic. It's not a hard ride at all, which is fine. They were doing road construction back there. We barely made it around a road closure to be able to connect with this road. But there's a lot of dirt roads you can kind of go around if you look at the map. So beautiful afternoon. It's like it's got to be like 3.30, 4 o'clock. So excuse me. So we, we want to get to camp in the next couple hours. It, you know, we try to avoid getting into camp at dark. That just sucks. So yeah, I'd hopefully be at camp around 6.37, you know, have an hour to set up before it gets dark. But yeah, beautiful day, perfect weather, no rain. We haven't had rain the whole trip yet, which is a little surprising, but I did route us around that thunderstorm yesterday. So I really like reading the weather and checking the radar and looking at maps. I'm really into geography and weather and all that kind of stuff. So usually I can get us around a storm if there's a, if there's an optional road to get around it. All right, I think we're almost to the summit of Weston Pass. Really beautiful. We just went above the tree line, so I don't know what that is. 10, 11,000 feet, something like that. Um, it's a rocky road. It's not difficult. It just is very, very... Uh, rocky and bumpy, so you just got to use caution. 
But man, it's so beautiful and peaceful up here and there's nobody else out here. I feel like we have this whole mountain all to ourselves. See high voltage lines going through the pass, which makes sense. Got to get power to the cities. Yeah, I don't know how these guys with these trailers deal with that. Yeah, we just know. rattle everything to death. I'm gonna add that one to my list. So we've got the dog leading the way and then coming down the ridge. <laughs> we've got all these horseback riders you can see up here. It's like a scene out of a Western movie. The scenery, the horses, everything. So we're trying to find camp for the night. There's like six Forest Service campgrounds in this area here, Turquoise Lake. And look, one of them we've come to just says closed, but on the website, it doesn't say it's closed. So it just doesn't make any sense. Well, we finally found a campsite that was open. There was like one campground open out of like six, but anyway, it's super peaceful here. We're at uh, Silver Dollar Campground near Turquoise Lake. It's high up in the mountains in the forest, super peaceful. I think we're gonna have a good night, so. Yeah, we'll catch you guys soon. Okay, we had a pretty great night of camping. Super quiet here at uh, Turquoise Lake uh, and Silver Dollar Campground. Great place to camp, highly recommended. We had a nice fire, beautiful night. Now we're just, uh, we got all packed up and we are getting ready to hit the trail again. We're in section four, I think. Uh, so we're just outside of Leadville. So we're headed up to Gypsum and, and that part today. So it should be a great ride. So this is uh, Turquoise Lake. We camped over there last night. You can see the level of the lake is so low that it's below the um, spillway outlet. So this is one of those things you see on social media where they have like the picture of the water going through what looks like kind of a, a whirlpool. It would drain over that and then go down through there and come out over here. Um, so it's interesting, but it's water is well below that. The entire western, southwestern USA right now is in the worst drought in recorded history, really. And so all of our lakes and reservoirs are draining down extremely low. And it's a very bad situation. So today we're going to continue on over Hagerman Pass, up into the mountains again, and uh, onward. So we're at the bottom of Hagerman Pass. Jeff wanted to scout this a little bit. I've heard this is really rough and rocky. It just looks like very slow, methodical work. Picking a good line. That's why they call this the Rocky Mountains. You're just riding over jagged rocks for 900 miles. It's actually very difficult to see because of all the shadows on the trail right now. I already have kind of bad vision already as it is. I actually never talked about this, but I have very bad depth perception because I have a I have an eye condition called strabismus, which means the my eyes are not really aligned for stereo vision. And so I've had a surgery to try to make it better, but I still only have a small amount of the stereo vision that most of you have. So in addition to my Crohn's disease, my color blindness and everything else, just another handicap, but that's okay, no excuses. I can deal with this as long as it doesn't get super steep. Okay, I think we're almost to the top. It's hard to tell. This is very rugged. It's very hard to keep the bike going in a straight line. Wow, look at that. There's a beautiful, beautiful lake down there. I bet a lot of this is carved by glaciers and things like that. Well, I made it to the top of Hagerman Pass. What do we have? Uh, 
12,000 feet, very rocky, rough, pretty rugged pass, but definitely doable. You just take your time, be careful. How's it going, Jeff? Such a great ride coming up this. I, I mean, it was challenging, but it was worth it. You just, just cruise it and let your bike do all the work. Yeah, exactly. Work every bit of it, the suspension, first gear, throttle. I hardly had to clutch anything. I was just tractoring up. Yeah, first gear, me too. Yeah, yeah it was good. All right, we got a little water crossing action going on here. Jeff already went through. It's actually not that deep, but you always want to use caution. Yeah. Free bike wash there. All right, so we came down off of Hagerman Pass. It was equally rocky and rough coming down the other side. It was, I was paying so much attention, I forgot to take video. But then we did take video at the water crossing. That was cool. So now we're back onto kind of better maintained gravel roads through like beautiful aspen trees, pine trees, really scenic part. I think we're, so we're in section four between Hagerman Pass and Gypsum. So I think we're coming down into some sort of area with like a lake or something and then heading up over into some mountains and then dropping down into gypsum more in the high desert. So we're hoping to at least finish that section today and then kind of make a game plan. We both kind of have some stuff going on at home uh, that is we might have to go home a day early. Uh, but we've done we've done I think all the, the best parts of the route for sure. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. But either way, it's an amazing adventure. Just grateful to be out here. All right, so we got off Frying Pan Creek Road and now we're on the Brush Creek Road uh, going over the mountains towards Gypsum and I-70 that way. So pretty, pretty decent section of, of dirt, I think, ahead of us before we get there. I don't know the difficulty. I did read on the map just now that this section or this Brush Creek Road is impassable when wet or totally impassable when wet. So if you have any moisture on the road at all, don't try to ride this section. But luckily for us, it's totally dry and dusty, so we don't have to worry about mud, just the inconvenience of dust. Somewhere down that way is a small village of uh, Thomasville, I think it's called. And um, but I didn't have any cell phone service, so I think it's a very small town. <laughs> and I have Verizon with pretty good coverage, so there you go. It looks like we're going to head back up a little bit into the mountains. We dropped from like 10,000 feet, 11,000 feet up at the pass to, you know, 7,000 down here. So there's a lot of elevation change on these routes, like dramatic. So it's, it's 80 something, 80 to 85 degrees here, and it was like 65 up there. So a lot of temperature changes too. All right, so we've crossed uh, Brush Creek Road. We just came over Crooked Creek Pass. Now we're heading towards Sylvan Lake. Uh, so this road has been interesting. They've been doing a lot of like road work on it. So parts of it that I just went through, they have like, you can kind of see it there. They have this like two inch layer of like silt or sand on the top, which can make the bike feel really unstable. What I recommend is kind of stand up, go about 30 miles an hour and just kind of grip the tank with your knees and kind of steer with your legs a little bit and you know you can just cruise through it. it shouldn't be too big of a deal if you try to go too slow it can become kind of unstable so we just cooled off in this mountain stream this water's like ice cold it was so refreshing dunk your head in get your jersey wet get some air conditioning going clean your hair clean the dust off your face <laughs> so nice nice little rest break you just have a shady area and a stream and the grass you you're required to stop in my opinion and if you're tired, you can, yeah, just go into someone's tent. Hopefully they're not in there when you go in it, but. So we're on this power line road, which seems to go forever. After that uh, break, we headed the river. Just kind of rocky, bumpy, a little bit sandy. Seems to kind of loop around. Just kind of ready to get to lunch, honestly, over in uh, Gypsum. But, you know, can't complain. I mean, look at the view. That's getting a little hazy. We're getting some smoke from wildfires out in Oregon and California. There's Jeff. Um, but yeah, I mean, the views certainly impress. So many wide open spaces. So yeah, you can see the reason this road is probably here is to maintain these high voltage lines that run through these mountains. 
All right, now this is Gypsum Creek Road. So we're getting near to the community of Gypsum along the Interstate 70. Uh, this is a nice, like, kind of oiled, hard pack road. The smoothest road we've been on in probably the last 100 miles, I would say. It's kind of a nice break from the bone rattling, teeth jarring uh, washboard and rocks that we've been having. So we're gonna go into Gypsum, get lunch, check our cell phones, uh, kind of plan a route out, and we'll go from there. All right, that is the Colorado River. So we are on Colorado River Road. What we decided to do was, out outside of Gypsum, they have you going north on a dirt road for just kind of this weird, strange route that didn't make sense to me, just to have more bumpy dirt roads. It's 95 degrees, it's very, very hot. So uh, we're trying to keep moving a little bit faster. So we uh, taking this road, this connects to the main route in just a few miles up here on the Colorado River Road. And then it heads up towards, uh, I guess it's Burns or, or that direction. So basically this is the second part of section five, I think, or the first part of section five. Um, and tonight will probably be either in Kremling or maybe Steamboat Springs. So it's looking like we're not gonna quite make section six into Wyoming because number one, time constraints. Number two, it puts us in bags or near bags and we have to come back to the desert. And this is the uh, worst heat wave on record for this part of the country uh, in recorded history, I guess, for the whole Western US right now. So it's just extremely hot. We wanna stay in the mountains. So I know Colorado pretty well and I'm gonna take us on a better route that will keep us out of the 100 degree temperatures. So for now, we can just enjoy the Colorado River and enjoy some nice uh, paved roads. All right, we're on the Colorado River Road. We've rejoined the official BDR a few miles back. You can see the train track running through the valley with the river. It's really beautiful. Um, it's This is a higher, it's like not quite mountains, but it's like high desert. So I think we're probably like 6,000 feet, uh, which sounds high, but it's actually low for Colorado. This, 90 to 95 degrees still hot uh just a heat wave right now okay so it's not raining but you can see the road is running with water apparently they're doing some kind of road construction and they have the need to um to wet the road down it's actually kind of slippery uh i don't know why it looks like this some kind of chemical or something they're putting down um Hope I'm not getting like some sort of corrosive chemical on my bike. I don't know. Jeff's riding on the shoulder. Maybe that's a smart way to go. I don't know. Is that water or something else? I couldn't tell you. But anyway, just kind of a weird thing that I haven't encountered too much. All right. So we've been climbing up out of Radium, uh, which is a little like rafting, like put in area, I guess, by the Colorado River. So that stuff I was just riding through. Jeff told me that's some kind of chemical that they treat the dirt roads with, so there's no dust. So it has some sort of oil or chemical in it. And I really need to wash it off my bike as soon as we find a car wash. I noticed after I went through that and I used my brakes, my brakes made this horrible squealing sound. And it's like all this yellow like goo all over my bike. So I'm really not happy about that, but you know, what can you do? Um, it's like burnt onto the exhaust pipe now. It turned like pure white. I'll have to show you that to you later, but very, very strange. I'm hoping I can get that cleaned off because I really like to have a clean bike. So beautiful open country up here. A lot different, you know, terrain and geography than the first couple sections. So we're about halfway through or maybe two thirds of the way through section five. So we're not to steamboat yet. Uh, so we're between Radium and, and Steamboat before you get to Lynx Pass if, you, if you're following along with the route. So pretty good ride today, a little bit hot. It cooled down now to about 85, but it has been 90 to 95 all this afternoon. So my feet feel like they're in a swamp and uh, probably don't smell too good either. So we are going to stay somewhere tonight, maybe RV park or KOA campground so that we can get a uh, shower because we are not smelling too good right now. We didn't get a shower last night because we camped in the forest. 
Well, this is pretty. I think we need to stop and take a picture here. Very pretty. I'm gonna park right here. Pretty spot for a photo. Oh yeah, this would be. Oh, the best photo is from this is from behind, like this. All right, good morning. I think this is day five of our ride. Is that is that right, Jeff? This would be day five, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're um, we're packing up camp. We stayed in Kremling last night. So Kremling is just off the route. It's a good place to stay because they have an RV park with showers, laundry, stuff like that. We needed to get cleaned up and get things organized. So had a good night, um, beautiful area, nice temperatures, trying to dry out the tents and stuff because we had quite a bit of dew. The tents got pretty wet, so don't really like packing up a wet tent. So today we're going to, we both need to start getting home in the next couple days. So we're going to start heading south back towards the truck, take some scenic routes. And we'll get some footage along the way. Um, so we're going to skip section six. So we made it almost all the way to Steamboat Springs. And so section six between Steamboat and the Wyoming border. I've actually ridden most of that already, but Jeff hasn't. But uh, we just, we don't want to get all the way to that part and then have to come back through the desert through that part of Colorado. So we're going to stick to the mountains, try to make this a nice ride. And yeah, we'll catch you soon. Okay, so the KTM 890, one of the things that they often have is they don't like to start in the morning. It's not that cold. It was probably 45 degrees overnight. So I've tried to start it three times now and it just coughs and dies. So let's keep trying. But I want to show you guys what this does. So I just hit the start a button. And just, it's, uh, you know, it just dies out. And you can hear it runs very rough, like it's running on one cylinder. Okay, so it took me about eight, it took me about eight times this morning to get it going, which is about the average for this bike. So just something to be keep in mind if you're gonna have one of one of these bikes. Uh, Jeff's bike doesn't you used to do that, but you got it flashed, right? It flashed, now it does this. Now it starts, right? Yeah. Start your bike. Cold start, haven't done anything this morning. Smooth. Oh, I caught Jeff at a weak moment doing some polishing. Better get that headlight. Oh my God, look how clean that is. Yeah. What are you doing, man? We're... Well, we're going on the freeway. I want to have it be as safe as possible with safety safety yep. look how safety. clean his bike is what did you do like wash it or something yeah i just broke i just had the turtle wax so i just put it away <laughs> <laughs> look at my bike still there. you didn't get my headlight come on there you go okay oh you got nice it's a cover yeah so you don't break it yeah the way you were roosting rocks at me <laughs> i'm surprised there mine's up <laughs> that thing roosts rocks like crazy. I'd stay about 100 yards back. Well, who knew that 100 horsepower and a knobby tire would create that issue? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I need to turn down my preload so I don't fall off the bike. And we need air per tires. Yes. So we'll be ready to go in a few hours, maybe. Yeah. It's been <laughs> we'll hit the road by lunchtime. I know. <laughs> See? Yeah, really. We'll be loaded. I've got to set the tent back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So what do you think of that ride? That was great. It was, <laughs> it was very relaxing. Yeah. The yeah. last the last 50 miles though, was just straight nothing though. Mm-hmm. So we're in the town of Saguache or Saguache, I don't know how to say it. Check out this cool alley. Yeah, pretty cool town. And then we're gonna go into this diner here. I, I pulled this up on Google as I was riding and uh, it has really good reviews. So we'll try that. Bikes are doing fine. We're definitely squaring off our tires a bit here with all these straight roads. Definitely time for us to uh, have a break here in Saguache, have some lunch. Just gets, just wears on you after riding for four hours. Let's see what we want to get here. What do you think of my choice of restaurant? This is a good one. I like it a lot. There's a lot of history in here.
So we're going over uh, through Pagosa Springs and Wolf Creek Pass through the southern, uh, I guess the San Juans, uh, going before you get to Durango in that area. Super, super pretty area, huh, Jeff? Oh, this is amazing. It's, um, you can't beat it. Just gets better and better everywhere you go. You gotta get back on the road. Well, we've done it. We finished our loop. We rode about a thousand miles in what, five days? Yeah, five yeah. days. So it was about 370 miles today, I think, to get back. But the truck's still here. Nobody stole it, so that's good. That's good uh, news. That's good news, right, Jeff? That's awesome. <laughs> so what, this is your first time riding in Colorado. What did you think? It's everything that I expected and even more. Um, I totally recommend. I recommend it. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's just just the scenery, the people, the just the weather. Everything is as as advertised. I mean, even look at the sky now. It's beautiful. You can see there's a lot of other bikes in the parking lot, of course, too. So yeah, that's so that's that's a wrap on this trip. We're gonna load the bikes up in the truck and then make our way back towards California, where we have a lot of stuff going on <laughs> with wildfires and tropical storms, and everything seems to happen when I'm on vacation. So anyway, thanks. Okay, so we're back in Idaho where I live and there's a tropical storm. So it's like 70 mile an hour winds and trees are falling down. This is one of the reasons we came home early. What do you think of the weather? Awesome, I wanna move up here. Yeah. Look at these trees, man. That is just insane. I've never seen pines move like that. You know it's strong. So, woo. yeah. So we survived the ride, but I don't know if we're gonna survive uh, getting back to our own house. <laughs>